The first expert I want to highlight is Dr. Sandra Crosby, who evaluated Julian Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy and wrote a letter to the UN High Commissioner on Human Rights about her concerns. And her concerns were that what's happening to Julian, even before he's evicted from the embassy, is a violation of the Convention Against Torture. She stated that directly. Dr. Crosby has extensive expertise, a world-renowned expert in the assessment of torture victims and working with refugees. Her credentials are impeccable. She supplied the Istanbul Protocol, which is the standard international medical protocol and legal protocol for assessing victims of torture 500 times. So she's done this over and over and over again. And when she assessed Julian, her conclusions were so concerning that she directly invoked the Convention Against Torture and a letter to the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. That letter led to the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Dr. Niels Meltzer, who's been mentioned before, a legal expert to visit Julian. He was supposed to visit Julian in the embassy, but due to the abuses and legal manipulations and foreign affairs abuses between the United States, Ecuador, and the UK, they evicted him from the embassy before Meltzer could get there. That was deliberate. That was on purpose. They did not want Meltzer to visit him in the embassy before they had the chance to violate international law and evict him. Uh, But Dr. Meltzer visited Assange in Belmarsh Prison in May of 2019 with two medical experts, experts in the assessment of victims of torture, also experts in the application of the Istanbul Protocol. All three individuals, the two medical experts and the UN Special Rapporteur, examined and assessed Julian independently, and all three independently conferred and came to the same conclusion before they conferred that this was psychological torture. So we have four experts definitively saying that Julian Assange is a victim of psychological torture. It's an undisputed medical fact and legal fact that Julian Assange is being psychologically tortured. No expert in the assessment of torture victims in the Istanbul Protocol has ever reached a different conclusion. And the conclusion is overwhelming. Dr. Meltzer has said that Julian shows all the signs of psychological torture. The special rapporteur wrote to all four countries engaged in this legal frame-up, the United States, the United Kingdom, Sweden, and Ecuador, and they all responded in the same manner as the worst totalitarian, abusive nations and governments in the world, which is they didn't respond, or they responded, oh, we don't torture. They did not engage in a dialogue. And under international law, when the special rapporteur has a finding of torture, the country is obligated under the Convention of Torture. That is sufficient evidence to initiate an investigation. None of those four countries has started an investigation into this episode with Assange and his torture. The expert in Assange's extradition hearing on which the judge relied mostly was Dr. Michael Koppelman. The reason she favored Dr. Koppelman was he had assessed Assange on more occasions and at more points in time and for longer durations than any other expert. He also, unlike the other experts, interviewed Assange's family and acquaintances, and he came to the unequivocal conclusion that Assange is severely depressed and at significant risk for suicide and would likely commit suicide if extradited. The other medical experts in the case did not evaluate Assange for as long or for over as protracted a period. And the other thing Dr. Koppelman did that impressed the judge was he took extensive contemporaneous notes uh, about his discussions and relied on those notes, hundreds of, I think, pages of notes, which he summarized at the extradition hearing. Assange has multiple risk factors for suicide, including he's on the autism spectrum, He has a family history and and he has severe depression due to all of the legal abuses that we've been discussing. The torture has now had an added physical component, I might add, where we heard this past winter that the prison refused to deliver Assange his warm clothes. So he was freezing cold. This is a well-known torture tactic to expose detainees to extreme cold conditions. This has happened to Guantanamo detainees as well documented, including 
I might add a quick plug for the movie, The Mauritanian, if everybody wants to understand that America, my country, I'm ashamed to admit, the United States is a torturing country. We torture. And that's been well documented and we're doing it in the case of Assange as well. Another medical aspect to this that gets overshadowed, uh, perhaps rightly so, is just the invasion of medical privacy. So there was uh, the CIA spied on Assange in the embassy through a company called UC Global that's now being criminally investigated in Spain for its illegal actions at what it did to Assange and his visitors in the Ecuadorian embassy. They film recorded his visits and audio recorded his visits with doctors. That's a grotesque violation of doctor-patient privacy. We object to that. We decry that. We call that out. America, you're reprehensible for doing that as well. As an American citizen, you kind of have this, some understanding of the international condemnation of our criminal justice system, especially with the death penalty typically, but for this case to have in part come down to refusing Assange's extradition because U.S. prison conditions are so reprehensible and objectionable to the conscience of the world is also stunning to me personally as American. And lastly, if you are a healthcare professional, especially a medical professional out there or a psychologist watching this today, join us. Join Doctors for Assange. Add your voice to the chorus. We need you. We need more voices. We need people to object to this treatment. And we need people to object to torture. And I know I said that was finally, I do have one more thing to say and then I'll wrap up, um, is that Nils Meltzer has written the introduction to an impressive volume that I took the time to read front to back called Interrogation and Torture. And there's a chapter in there written by, every chapter is written by a different author that describes how torture erodes the very foundations of democracy and justice and the rule of law. And so the more we torture, the more our democracy crumbles. And so this case of Assange is literally eating away at the foundations uh, of our society.